Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, you guys, if you have your Bibles you know. or your Bible phone, let's open it up you to... Nowadays, we're in the phones with the Bibles. You know, huh? I was just telling him how we're in the phones with the Bibles now. Mm -hmm. I'm here, Obama. Let's take a look at Matthew 23 and 12. Matthew chapter 23, verse 12. And when you have, say amen. 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 All right. Amen. 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 And the word of God says, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be humbled. And whosoever shall humble himself shall be exalted. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's also look at Proverbs three and thirty four. Proverbs three and thirty four. You may want to bookmark the one I just read. And I'm I'm reading from the American Standard Version of the Bible. Surely he scoffeth at the scoffers, <laughs> but he giveth grace unto the lowly. And the NIV, he mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. Today, we are going to talk about humbling ourselves. So I want you to look at somebody and you say, God wants you to humble yourself. God, God wants, wants you to humble, humble yourself. <laughs> Let's say it one more time. God, God wants, wants you to humble yourself. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. So I want you guys to ask yourselves a few questions. Do you love God? Yes, I do. Yes. yes. yes do you need God? Yes. 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 <laughs> And do you find success with God important? Yes. Absolutely. If you can answer Amen. those three questions, then you may be able to answer the question, are you humble enough to receive God? Mm -hmm. yes. We as humans, human nature, we tend to come a little prideful. We come proud. We come boasting. And we come pumping our chest up sometimes. Mm -hmm. Human nature. Whether it's right or wrong, it's not what we're judging. We're looking at human nature. Mm -hmm. What it, Naturally, humans want to be proud of themselves. You want to be proud of your son. You want to be proud of your daughter. You want to be proud of your sisters, your brothers. Naturally. It's something about us that it springs up and it says, Man, I did that. Or I saw that through. But we know that there can be danger in being proud. For we just read in Matthew that he who exalts himself, makes himself out to be more than what he is, God will humble you. Mm -hmm. that, ain't the, that ain't the best feeling in the world. Mm -hmm. But if you humble yourself before God and recognize your position, I am mere human. You are God. You are God alone. You can take care of everything. I need you. I love you. And I cannot succeed without you. God will exalt you. God will work those things out that you need him to work out. God will see you through. So there is some humility that we have to look into ourselves and we have to put into practice. Because naturally, as humans, we're not always humble. Naturally. When we go to school at, at, a, at a young age, we're taught to be proud of ourselves. We're taught make A's and B's and be proud of that. We're taught get along with other people and be proud of that. And so then when your child comes home and they're saying, mommy, mommy, I made a good report card, what do we do? I'm proud of you. Rarely do we say God is proud of you. Now, that's nothing wrong with that. It's 
So don't get me wrong. We do want to embrace and empower, but we also have to recognize where our strength is and where our focus is, where our help is. Because we know that if your child comes home from school with good grades, we know that they couldn't have done it themselves. It was God watching and looking over them, and God has blessed them with the ability to be smart. So let me read something. This is called The Prologue to Every Success Story. Preacher Cotton Mather invited a young Benjamin Franklin over for dinner one night and showed him his library. As they walked through a narrow passage into the library, Mather yelled back at Franklin, Stoop! Stoop! Franklin didn't understand the exhortation until it was too late, bumping his head on a low beam. And y'all know Franklin was tall. Mm. Mather turned the situation into a sermon. Let this be a caution to you not always to hold your head so high. Stoop, young man. Stoop, young woman, as you go through this world and you'll miss many hard thumps. Many years later, Franklin told Mather's son that he never forgot that moment. This advice, thus beat into my head, has frequently been of use to me, he said. And I often think of it when I see pride, mortified, and misfortunes brought upon people by carrying their heads too high. Like each of the seven deadly sins, pride has nine lives. You have to fight the battle every single day. But there are decisive victories, and that was one for me. Pride goes before destruction. Likewise, humility comes before honor. In the spiritual order of things, it's inviolable. Pride is the first chapter in the book of success. A failure, rather. Humility is the first chapter in the book of success. God won't put you in a position of leadership until you take a posture of servanthood. So as you're pursuing your God-sized, God-given dream, remember the attitude you need to keep from beginning to end. Stoop. And meanwhile, here's a tip. There are two ways to get humility. You can humble yourself or let God humble you. Mm. Choose the former so you don't have to experience the latter. Now that was something that I read as I was studying and preparing for this. So we must stoop. We must bow our heads and we must recognize our position. There's nothing wrong with being humble. There's nothing wrong with a little humility. But before we talk about humility, humility, let's let's go a little bit further into pride. There are several verses of scripture in the Bible that talks about pride. We just read two of them. Can somebody open up Proverbs 16 and 8 and read that one? And somebody else open up Proverbs 18 and 12. So one person 16 and 8, the other person 18 and 12. So, 1, 16, and 8, and the other one, 18, and 12. 16, 18, rather. 16, 18, 18, 12. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm 16, 18. Okay. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to read the King James and the regular version. Um, King James says, Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. And the New International Version says, Before a downfall, the heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. So we're looking at two verses of scripture already that's showing us that if we get too ahead of ourselves, we're bound for destruction. Let me read for you the definition of pride. A feeling or deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements. The achievements of those with whom one is closely associated or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. It was through pride that the devil became the devil. Pride leads to every other vice. It is the complete anti-God state of mind. So here are some pains that associated with pride. In the end, nobody gonna like you. 
Mm-hmm. Nobody gonna like you. Nobody gonna look at you and say you conceited, you arrogant, you pump yourself up. You don't think about nobody else but yourself. Even when you get to a point of success, and if you're prideful about it, you lose you lose sight of everybody else. What about your friends? What about your family? Self-centered thinking causes you to miss out on blessings and opportunities. Imagine that one blessing that you miss. No, I'm all right. I'm good. But somebody's trying to bless you. Or I'm too good. You got that I'm too good for that thinking. Pride also opposes the fact that you need God. Remember earlier I asked, do you need God? Pride opposes that. Because you have to show that you need God. And at last, it will keep you talking at times when you need to hush. When God is speaking to you or trying to show you something about yourself or your life, pride will keep you talking and talk you right out of a blessing. And then you're looking at God going, why God? Why? What about me? Because he had to humble you after you didn't show so much pride over here. And then you turn around and you start asking God why. And you can't see yourself that you missed your own blessing. Mm -hmm. But let's take a little second and look at humility. Because that's where we all, that's where we at, right? That's where we at. (laughs) (laughs) Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. St. Bernard defines it as a virtue by which a man, knowing himself as he truly is, abases himself. Jesus Christ is the ultimate definition of humility. And we all trying to be more like Christ, right? Right. We all trying to be more Christ-like. Yes. It's also a modest or low view of one's own importance. And it recognizes the relationship that we have with God. In reality, humility is powerful. Absolutely powerful. I have seen some miracles happen just by being humble. Mm -hmm. Just Mm -hmm. by acts of humility. Now imagine you got a group of people together and everybody expressing humility all across the board. Imagine what blessings come as as a result of that. That's in your hand? (laughs) Yeah. Okay, go ahead. This is the church where you can ask questions. I was going to say, you brought up a great point because I've been driving around trying to get an oil change for like a month and they were always saying that I had to schedule. And so even when I got there, they were like, well, I can't, we can't do your oil change. Mm -hmm. And a few weeks before, my dad gave me a uh, gift certificate for a free oil change for AAA. So I had been looking for it. I found it. And then um, I spoke to the guy the day before. He told me to come early that morning. So I went, I went and the guy who helped me out, he was really sick that day. And he was like, I don't want you to get too close. I'm I'm really sick. And um, yeah, so just let me know what it is that you need. It's really nice. So I said, okay, this is all I need. The oil change, free oil change. And he told me it was gonna be extra because Honda takes, you know, more premium oil than the free oil that they were giving. So I said, okay, that's fine. He told me how much more it was gonna be. I said, okay, that's fine. So um, I was right in the same parking lot as a Kroger's. I was like, something told me, I'm pretty sure the Lord told me, go on this Kroger's, go get all this stuff for this man because he's sick. So I went and got like crackers, I got chews, I got oranges, I got tea, and I got, I bought a bowl and some stuff, you know, he can eat out of. And then I brought it back and, to give it to him in the parking lot, because I went in and he, was, he wasn't in there, so I figured he was talking to the guy outside. So I gave him that, and he was like, oh my goodness, you didn't have to do this. And they say that, um, well they say, it's shivery dead. <laughs> and he said, thank you so much. I have, you didn't have to do this, I have all of this at home. And he said, look, she gave me a care package to one of his employees, a lady. And I'm thinking to myself, because he was saying that he was about to go home, and I was like, I'm pretty sure he told a lot of people that he was sick. And you guys are right out in the same parking lot as his Kroger's. And nobody tried to help him. Y'all yeah, were just going to send him home. So <laughs> I gave him that. And I went in. The other guy was about to ring me up. He said, no, I got it. I got it. So he rung me up. And he was like, you're free to go. 
<laughs> I, I took my card out, everything. He said, you're free to go. I said, really? Wow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Immediately. Immediately. God can turn. Just right. like you said in that song, God can turn it around, right? Right. <laughs> <Like you're laughs> Amen. So let's look at some benefits of being humble. You can actually hear from God if you're humble. I want us to just pause for a second and just feel the breeze and just listen to the air and just feel the nature because it's a beautiful thing to be outside. Mm -hmm. To me, this puts me in a place of being humble. Beautiful day too. Just enjoying the moment and enjoying the peace and the calm of God makes me humble. I can actually hear from Him. We can hear Him. Great rewards from heaven come as a result of being humble. And Yaya just shared that with us. Great rewards. Blessings that we couldn't even imagine were going to happen. I get more excited about that than things that I expect to happen, right? <laughs> yeah. That unexpected blessing is so much more exciting than that expected one. Mm -hmm. It also will help you to remain quiet when you don't need or have to say a word. Let somebody cross you the wrong way, say the wrong thing to you. And your collie paw street, you know, come out and you looking at them like, okay, you know, I ain't, I'm a Christian, but you know, I'm, don't, don't push me. But God in your mind telling you, just, just be quiet, walk the other way. Okay, Lord, I'm going to follow you and be humble. Because sometimes people push us to that. But humbleness will allow us and help us to not have to say anything. And you never know, that person may come back and apologize, that person may, God, God will show us what can happen in situations like that. And the last thing is that humbleness helps us to step aside and let God go to work. If we trying to help God out with our blessings, we doing it wrong. And I've been there before, I'm guilty mm -hmm. of it. Because I, I think I'm smart. Even though God gave me this brain, I think I'm smart. <laughs> God, if you just work this out this exact way that I've got planned in my head, then it'll be like boom, bam, bam. It'll be everything be all right. But how many of you guys know that God protects us from danger seen and unseen? Mm -hmm. Seen mm -hmm. and unseen. Can you imagine? Probably more unseen than seen. Because mm -hmm. then that's when I stoop and I go, okay, there were some things I didn't see, Lord, coming that I know you protected me from that in other areas I thought if I if I had it my way it would be a true blessing but then later on down the line you show me that wasn't for you humbleness allows us to step aside and let God bless us. how many of you guys feel like you need a blessing today from God how many of you guys feel like you need a blessing from God how many of you guys hey, feel like you woo. want that yeah, blessing right. from hey, God yes. yeah. so guess what stoop and step aside that's my new dance right there, Mr. Robert. Stoop and step aside. Stoop and step aside. Stoop and step aside, right? Yes. So as I wrap up, we can talk and share. You know, we can continue this conversation if we want to. I just want us to remember how important being humble is. And I know that with God, all things are possible. And just like his word says, if we humble ourselves, we stoop, and we step aside, eventually he'll raise us up. All right. Amen. 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 Amen.